Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergaga.com and in this video we are going to look at how to return the last value from a row using an Excel formula. So I've got some data on screen with six products and I've got some weeks coming across in a row and I want to return the last value for each product so the current week sales. So when I freeze these first two columns and scroll to the right over weeks worth of data, but I can always see how the current week is doing in column B. Now I'm going to use the index function for this, a truly remarkable function. And in cell B3, I can simply type equals index and open up my bracket. So the job of index, or one of its many jobs, is to return a value from a specified column and row. So the array, now what I don't want to do in this example right now is select row 3. Well that's quite a common thing we would do to select the entire column or the entire row that we're looking in. But because my formula is in that row, that will create a circular reference. So instead I'm going to begin from cell C3 and throw it way over into the future on the right so that I can cater for additional columns of data as they're entered. So I'm just going to type in my colon there and I'm going to enter NZ3. So I'm going to throw it all the way over to column NZ which is about 400 columns across. Uh, so a little over a year's worth of data. And I'm going to imagine that's definitely enough for one sheet's worth of records. I can then put in my column, what row are we returning from? Well, it's definitely a number one because I've only highlighted one row's worth of data. Another column puts us into the tricky bit, which is the column number. So this is now where we need to find the last value. And for this, I'm going to use count A. Now I could use just a count function here because I only have numbers in that range. But I'm going to use count A so it counts all non-blank cells because depending what data we're using or you might be using, this one's more likely going to find the last cell. If I open up my bracket and just enter C3 colon NZ3 again, close off that bracket for count A, close off that bracket for index and press enter and the last cell is 456. I then fill that down to the bottom and I have the last value for each row. So using index and count A there, really, really useful. Now, what if we want the second from last value? Well, let's insert a column in here. They'll adjust to column D for me. And let's imagine we want last week's data. And this could be used in some kind of analysis. Well, for this, I would just have the same formula. Let me copy that and escape out. Come into this cell, enter the same formula. But instead, just after count A there, Take away one. So now we've got the previous cell. So find the end, go back one. We now have 200. That's the second from last cell, otherwise known as last week in this evolving data. And now we have that. So if I zoom out for one moment and imagine that we have, let me just resize those. That's going to annoy me. <laughs> if we have another week's worth of data, and then I'll enter some values at 345, and that is returned. The current one is 345, the previous is 456. Now let's step that up a notch with this example. So I've now renamed this sheet weeks, but it has the same data as a moment ago. But rather than returning the last cell for each product, I now have this other sheet called report, where I'm imagining we're consolidating some data for some kind of dashboard or report. And we've got a nice drop-down list in cell A3 here of each product. 
So if I just select one for now, product C, what I want is this week and last week's value to be returned for product C. So not only are we finding the last cell in the row, but we're also finding the product. So in cell C3, it's going to be index again, but the array this time is going to be the whole lot. So if I start from cell B3, and if I just zoom in on the formula bar here, I can then just type in NZ8. So this time we're stopping at row eight because that is the last row for these products. And we're not going to have to worry about the number of products maybe as much as we do the weeks, which will obviously change weekly. I can then put in my comma, so it prompts for a row number. And this time we need to find that as well. So I'm going to bring in the match function. If you haven't heard of the brilliant of index and match, then that's something you need to look up. But here comes an example, the lookup value. Well, that is cell A3. Now, we can't see that at the moment, but I'm referring to cell A3 on the report sheet. This is the one with the drop-down list. This has got product C written in it at the moment. Comma, the lookup array will be the list of products. Product A to product F, otherwise known as A3 to A8. It will write weeks in for me. Comma zero for exact match, close off match function. Comma, so we're now on column number. And now we need the technique from before. We need to count a function. But this time, here comes a difference. I'm going to get it to count row two. Because this time I don't know what row we're in. Because people are selecting products. And we could find that. But rather than getting anything too complex, I'm going to use the headers, because that will work. Now I could select the whole row, but I want my formula to be consistent here. So I'm deciding just to enter in weeks, exclamation mark for the sheet. I'll start from column B, because I started from column B in the original array. And I need to be consistent here. Uh, so it's B2, that's where the headers are, row 2, colon NZ2. Close off the bracket for count A, close off index, and enter brings us back to the other sheet with 636 for product C. And if we look at the week's sheet, product C, 636, is indeed correct. I can then copy that formula. Control C, press escape, get into last week, paste it in, and put my minus one on that count A. And that should bring out the previous week of 527, which can then be used in some analysis, such as a percentage difference formula. So we can have this week take away last week and divide it by this week. And then we can see there was a 17% improvement in that number. And we can use this same technique to create charts where we can have the last six weeks in a line graph and all that kind of stuff. So the key reason for this video is to find the last uh, value in a row. We've added to that the last week's value as well. And then into this index match example, running from a drop down list so that we can create dynamic reports, always giving you the, the current situation, even if data is changing regularly. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.